Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Crown and today we are going to have some more stories that I hope that you will enjoy. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go! First story. Neighbor calls the police because my mother-in-law is parked across the road from their driveway. Updated. To summarize, my mother-in-law parked across the street from my neighbor's driveway. They started losing their minds as they believed it to be their property. This led to some shouting and of course a call to the boys in blue. So as you can probably guess, yes, the driveway overlords did indeed phone the police. After her threats, we waited around waiting for my mother-in-law to be shipped away to the big house for committing the ultimate crime. Parking on a public street. I know, please try to hold judgment. However, like most close-knit streets, our other neighbors came out to see what all the fuss was about and oh did we get the gossip. It turns out we aren't the only people she's complained about. Social carers for the elderly, visitors for other houses, council workers, and even people who live on the streets have all received notes and stern warnings from our delightful neighbors about our property. Although we were the lucky ones who finally pushed them over the edge. Well, they finally arrived. We can see their house from our window. So it was prime viewing. Milady of the driveway came running out of the house, clutching a mug of what I can only guess is the tears of orphaned children. They went into her house and closed the door and so we waited, hoping that they would come across to get our side of the story. Well, our wish was granted, but let me tell you, it was so much sweeter than we could have imagined. After watching the officer poking his head out the door like a meerkat, Trying to figure out where the car was that was blocking their driveway, she gave him a hand and pointed to my mother-in-law's car, parked across the street. This poor fella looked more confused than a drunk with a calculator. He eventually went back inside before heading over to our house, and that's where the real fun began. He came to our door and we greeted him with a customary hi, what can we do for you, officer? And here is the following conversation from what I can remember. He tells us, good morning. We received a complaint about a car from this property blocking a driveway. My mother-in-law tells him, hey there. Yeah, we've been expecting you. Are you the resident here? No, my son and daughter-in-law are. But it's my car that's been reported. The silver one across the street from their house. So, I'm having trouble understanding the issue here. Was your car parked across their driveway? Nope. It's been parked in the same space since I got there. Well, your neighbor is claiming you blocked their car in their driveway and were trespassing. Oh, we know. She's been leaving notes on my car and others in the street. She's been claiming that the entire section of the road is part of her personal driveway. You can ask the other neighbors. What notes? Has she asked you to move? Yeah, kind of. She told us and the rest of the neighbors that they would try not to hit our cars. What do you mean? She's been accusing us all of parking in her driveway, across the street from her house on the public road. I even have a photo of where the car was parked a few hours ago. I showed him the photo, making sure to point out the time and date it was taken. And he just shook his head. He asked if there was anything else he should know before dealing with the matter. And we were more than happy to fill him in on how she came to my door to stamp her feet in disapproval. Throwing all the aggressively condescending, it's illegal, sweethearts, she could our way. He asked if we felt threatened. I said no, but I wasn't happy that she was yelling at me while holding my baby. He said he understood, and we encouraged him to talk to the neighbors to get the full picture of what's going on. So that's exactly what he did, and oh boy, it was all so much worse than I thought for them. In our street, news travels fast. We're gossipy little jerks. We even have our own street WhatsApp group. Yeah, I know it's kind of sad, but we're all friends. Lockdown really brought us together. The officer did in fact make his way down the doors, and they were all more than happy to grab them in after all their gripping. It turned out that not only had they been harassing other people for parking near their home, 
but they had also been witnessed exiting the car looking a little wobbly. Wobbly as in three sheets to the wind, drunk as a fart. One can only assume this is why he needs 20 plus feet to reverse into his driveway. His wife, the lady of the driveway and pain in my life, has been spreading rumors that other people were having affairs. However, the piece de resistance was revealed to us when the officer came back to our house. When the officer asked about our trespassing on her property, she told the officer that I trained my cat to do her business in her plant pots. My huge, fluffy and attitude-fueled kitty had been having his morning poop in her begonians. His friend is Stanford, and he's renowned in our street for being a sassy little jerk, sitting on top of cars, sneaking into people's houses, and sleeping on their beds and, of course, tormenting dogs. I have never been prouder of him. In the end, the officer went back to her house, and from what we can tell, told her to stop being a fud, and if they were caught drunk driving, they would be arrested. Any more notes or come into people's doors, and they could be charged with harassment due to the volume and nature of the events. Essentially, they were told to get a grip and the officer went off to attend to actual crimes. Now, the neighbor parks across the street from his driveway in protest, and the rest of the street accommodates by parking directly in front and behind him, as is our right by law. I hope my cat held eye contact while he was pooping on your plants. Next story. Crazy lady claimed to be the former owner of my truck. In 2020, I lost my home in a wildfire. I was only left with whatever I could pack up in a Ford Focus during the evacuation. I was renting a basement apartment in a country house, and most of my stuff went up in flames. I realized that my car may get good gas mileage, but it's not gonna hold a lot of stuff or towing anything. My landlord evacuated his family in a big GMC truck with a fifth-wheel trailer. He had everything he needed from emergency food storage to backup vehicles. His wife drove another truck out fully loaded with a trailer full of their stuff. They had everything they needed to survive and more. And that made me realize that I needed to be better prepared. I had to couch surf for a while and I could never stay in one place for long because I was a guest and not a tenant. So I ended up living out of a tent in a field with several other people who'd also lost their homes to the fires. It was like a tent village set up by a local charity. The shelters were beyond full, and it's a warm climate. So tents were the next best thing to go considering the situation at the time. I managed to get a used but decent sized tent, and I basically furnished it like a tiny apartment with a cot small table and some chairs. I even housed the poker night in it a few times, though I tried to make sure I didn't leave anything worth stealing in it when I went to work. I was still going to work almost every day, and even volunteering for extra shifts. I was saving money since I wasn't paying rent living the tent life, and I made up my mind to keep saving to one day buy a truck of my own. Because if this situation was the wildfires or some other disaster ever happened again, I need to be better prepared. Move on to just a few months ago. I put down over a year's worth of savings to buy a used Chevy Silverado 1500 with a canopy already on it. It's got a few dents and a big diagonal scratch across the hood, and the paint is a bit weather-worn, but so what? It had a good bit less than 100,000 miles on it, a list of recent repairs that included a new radiator. I'd spent a year living as cheaply as possible to save as much as possible. I wanted a truck and a camp trailer in case the fires ever come home. Some people have tried to call me a hoarder for picking up stuff off the side of the road and using it, but I don't keep all that stuff at my apartment. In fact, I keep almost minimal furniture. Some remark that my apartment looks like it was just moved into, as I still keep some of my stuff packed in boxes. I want to be able to pack and leave fast if I have to. Especially since the world only seems to be getting worse right now. I bought the truck. An ironically silver Silverado. I bought it off a man who looked to be in his 50s and said he has a bad back and can't use it anymore. 
and he gave me a steal of a deal when I came to get it by dropping the price by a thousand dollars because he felt I was clearly in love with it. And I am. I'm very happy with the truck. She drives like a dream. A big heavy dream, but still a dream. And she was clearly underdriven by the previous owner as it's still not at 100,000 miles. I still kept my old Ford Focus though, that way my fuel costs won't skyrocket. Now let's go to what happened a few weeks after I bought a truck. I was out in the same general area I bought a truck in to look at a used camp trailer that I was possibly interested in buying. But it ended up being in such bad shape that I turned it down because it was beyond my skills to repair. Before leaving the town I stopped to eat at a local diner. Great burgers there by the way. And as I was leaving after having dinner, I noticed a woman who looked to be somewhere in her 40s looking over my truck. I'm not gonna use the term Karen to describe this person because I know two women named Karen and they are both fantastic people. So no Karen here, but she did sorta of have that look that people associate with a stereotype. I asked the lady what she was doing poking around my truck and she gave me a side glare while demanding to know where I got it. I said I just bought it a few weeks prior and she rushed up to me and said I did not buy it. I stole it. I told her no. I purchased it from the title owner. So that makes it mine. The lady then rifled through her purse to pull out a smartphone and scrolled through it. And then she showed me a photo of a truck in it. I looked at the truck in the picture and I'll be a monkey's uncle. It was the same truck. The license plate and the scratch on the hood were clearly visible. And there was also a man in the photo. The same guy who sold me the truck. When I acknowledged this, the crazy lady started yelling, See! See! And then demanded I return it to her. She held her hand out for the keys and kept saying to give it back. I told her I bought the Silverado fair and square of the guy in the photo and that it's my truck now. But she didn't lit up. She went and sat on my bumper and called the police. She was heavily exaggerating while talking to the operator or dispatcher or whatever they call the person on the line when you call 911. I am not sure. Anyways, she refused to get off my truck. So I decided to just wait it out for the police to show up. When police got there, I stayed completely calm but the crazy lady went off and started working up tears and saying that her truck went missing some time ago. And she finally found it. Then she demanded they arrest me for Grand Theft Auto and get her truck back. I just calmly unlocked the doors, got my insurance card, registration and the license to hand to one of the officers. I told them to just check my documents and they would see I'm the legal owner. But the crazy lady did not stop. She tried to run to the door of the truck that opened but I relocked it before I shut it. And she tried repeatedly to pull on the handle while telling the police to just arrest me already. One of the officers calmed the lady down while the other ran my information. He came back after a few minutes and said everything checks out. And the crazy lady looked, a pretty word I like to use that I think can best describe the moment, gobsmacked. She said that it can be and demanded the police to check again then pulled out her phone to show more pictures of the truck. I pointed out that the man in one of those photos was the one who sold me the truck. And I have no idea what relation the crazy lady is to him, but he's the only person I bought the truck from. The police asked her who it was and she said it was her soon-to-be ex-husband. They were going through a divorce. I pointed out when I bought the truck, her husband's name was the only one on the title. And a crazy lady yelled at me that it originally bought it for her. And it was missing one day after she came home. All I could do was shrug and say I did not know that. But her husband was a legal owner before me. And I brought the truck from him. The police told her that I was correct and it is legally my truck now. And the lady went crazy to just very sad as she cried that it was her truck and he sold it without her permission. I did feel sorry for the woman and said to the police that they may want to do a wellness check on her or something. They said I was free to go and they would handle the situation from there. 
When I was getting ready to leave, that crazy lady yelled that she was going to follow me and find out where I live. But the two officers did not let her do so. I put her in their car and drove away. I left the parking lot and hightailed it on the highway out of there. I later contacted the guy who sold me the truck and he admitted that the crazy lady is his soon-to-be ex-wife. She cheated on him for the second time and it was the final nail in the coffin for their marriage. The truck was always in his name only and that woman had signed a prenup when they married. So the divorce was not going in her favor. It's been months now and that lady has not found me again. So I'm probably in the clear as long as I avoid the area I bought the truck in. Though for all I know she's not even living there anymore since her husband divorced her. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.